So what did you tell the king? Well, uh, first I, I thanked him and I thanked Her Excellency for having a meeting with the leaders of First Nations, Inuit and Métis, and that it was the first time that this had happened. Um, so just starting with thanks for the openness to have the conversation about uh, the relationship between the king and uh, Inuit in Canada was something that we've, I've never had the opportunity to do before. Uh, we talked a little bit about our shared priorities, the things that we'd like to do together, but I also talked about the huge influence that the Crown has had on Inuit and on uh, uh, the last two to three hundred years of our history and how that isn't something that perhaps he thinks of every day, but it's certainly something that Inuit uh, think of when you think of the relationship that we have. It is with the Crown in Right of Canada. And so I invited him to come to Inuit Nunangat to uh, learn more about uh, not only the governance, but also a lot of uh, the issues that we face, whether it be the environment or climate change or mental health, education, and um, just continue on the conversation, ultimately getting to a point where we could have shared priorities and that we could work on scopes of work that are both in our interests and also in his interests as well. Did the idea of an apology come up? Uh, we didn't explicitly talk about an apology. I know that that has been a topic of conversation uh, in Canada and other Indigenous leaders have raised it. Uh, naturally, if we get to that point where it is a, a, um, an important priority for First Nations, Inuit and Métis. Uh, I hope that, that he will uh, be in a space to, to consider it for what it is. But that is uh, in, a, in a future time. Uh, right now, we're focused more on just establishing a, a relationship that can be fruitful um, and one that we can get to those hard issues as we continue to, to progress in those conversations. So uh, what, I, what I'm hearing is that the, the, uh, an apology from the king is not a priority for the um, INO leaders right now. Um, but when you talk about shared priorities, what concretely are you looking for more from, from the king or the crown? What, what can, he, can he do? Well, first and foremost, the conversations that we can have with the king that lead to a, a greater global understanding of indigenous people, indigenous people's rights, and um, you know, colonization. Uh, that, that these are still things that we are struggling with and trying to overcome and need um, you know, as wide a stage as we possibly can have to have these conversations about reconciliation. We also know that uh, the king has a very real convening power and an influence over Canada. And we hopefully would like to see him, when he does spend time thinking about Canada, to think about Indigenous people's rights, the implementation of treaties in Canada, the, risk, the um, upholding of Indigenous people's human rights, and that he would have an expectation um, to make that a priority when talking to Canada about its obligations to First Nations, Inuit and Métis. Why is an apology not a priority right now and the conversation on reparations? Because there is a, a letter that was sent to the King. There are 12 representatives from around the world that have uh, demanded an apology from the King. Why is that not something that is top of your agenda right now? Uh, we want to, this is really the start of the conversation. And uh, I don't want to make any apologies for the king or for the lack of an apology for the human rights abuses, the lack of human rights and respect for indigenous peoples by the crown. Uh, that has been a, a, a part of our lives for as long as I have been alive and many generations have passed. Uh, we are trying to work in a productive way and we're trying to figure out the best path to, to real change um, in our communities. And sometimes those paths uh, of direct confrontation 
are not the most productive paths. So it isn't to say that we will not be seeking um, forms of apologies or redress, or, but it is uh, to say that for now, we are trying to, to create a positive working environment where we can make substantive change over time, um, where it is mutually possible. And sometimes that's all we have at, the, at our disposal. Uh, and I'll try to make the best of whatever opportunities that Inuit do have. Uh, and certainly over time, perhaps this is a sea change moment. And in time, um, you know, leaders who follow me uh, will be able to do the things that I only dream of doing today. Can you just talk to me about the immense, you use the word grandeur of the moment, the fact that you are standing on the shoulders of your ancestors, your elders, to convey a message to a man who represents an institution which has historically oppressed and subjugated. Mm -hmm. To have traveled all this way to be able to convey that message in person, to have an audience with the king, which is so rare. How empowering was that for you? Uh, I think it empowers Inuit to be a part of the official delegation for an, a global event like this. It's empowering for Inuit to be given an audience uh, with the king two days before the coronation when it is the only audience that uh, Canada has uh, with his, uh, his Majesty in this particular time. So the, the fact that we are a part of Canada's diplomatic priority in a global sense is incredibly new. And to be a part of that change, uh, when I've grown up hearing people talk about, almost like the crown uh, is still actively governing our lives in the moment, in a small town like Ne Nunatsiafut, and to, to sometimes get the feeling that it is just the way it is, is that we are ruled by people who ultimately really have little consideration for our well-being or even that we exist, that is being replaced by us having a formal relationship and a working relationship with these very institutions that we grew up um, thinking we had no ability to control. Uh, so uh, it, is a, it, it is exciting and also uh, um, I think I feel the weight of being a part of the first generation of people to be able to occupy these spaces and tell our stories and to try to tell them as well as I possibly can um, and strike that tenor between telling the stories of um, oppression versus telling the stories of resilience and hope. And today it was really on the side of resilience and hope and a common relationship, but certainly we are going to get to those other spaces. And sometimes being the, the first person to interact, uh, you have to take a different approach uh, than perhaps the third or fourth in the door. Uh, so today I hope I did my people as well as I could and um, I look forward to future conversations.